Higher blood pressure and a wider waistline. That's what's plaguing more Singaporeans compared with pre-pandemic times. Hypertension and obesity are among the issues flagged in the latest National Population Health Survey, which interviewed some 8,000 adults from mid-2021 to 2022. It also found fewer Singapore residents have diabetes and high blood cholesterol. Another national survey on eating habits found that residents are consuming more sodium than what is recommended. So nearly two in five Singapore residents were found to have hypertension or high blood pressure. That's nearly double the number from 2010. The increase was mainly in older people aged 50 to 74 years old. Obesity is also on the rise. Close to 12% of Singapore residents are overweight. Now, the increase was mainly seen in the 18 to 29 and 40 to 59 age groups. Chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, high blood cholesterol are consequences of our lifestyles, especially eating habits. We are what we eat. Food can be medicine if we eat well, but it can be poison if we do not eat well. In a corresponding study on eating habits, it found people in Singapore are eating more fatty foods. Fat intake is up 6 grams from 2019 to 2022. Of the total amount of fat consumed last year, 36% consisted of saturated fat. And this exceeds the recommended limit of 30%. Well, on the flip side, whole grain consumption remains low. Only 4% of staples consumed last year were whole grains. Daily sodium intake is also up among the population. 9 in 10 Singapore residents were found to exceed the daily recommended amount. That's around 2,000 milligrams or one teaspoon of salt. HPB will therefore also launch a campaign to encourage industry and FMB operators to pledge to reset sodium levels, roll back sodium content in their dishes to the levels in 2010. We can do this by switching to lower sodium salt or better, simply adding less salt or less condiments. The industry is already working to lower salt consumption. Sabrina Ng serves up their latest efforts as she goes on a food hunt. A steaming bowl of laksa or plate of nasi lemak. These dishes are popular meal options among locals. But they also pack a punch and at times a whole day's worth of sodium intake. An excessive amount of salt intake uh, is an important contributory factor to development of high blood pressure. Over time, this high blood pressure may cause a deterioration in the function of the heart and uh, can cause heart failure. That's why the Health Promotion Board is working with industry partners to lower sodium levels in food. For this restaurant, they're looking to switch the salt they use at all outlets from regular to lower sodium options. We have actually already started doing some trials uh, as we speak, but uh, it's still the early stages of it. Um, so far, our experience tells us that there is no significant uh, noticeable differences uh, between lower sodium salt compared to the regular salt. Manufacturers too have a part to play. This food supplier provides ingredients for several large restaurant chains and schools in Singapore. They currently have nine lower sodium products and are planning to add three more within the next few years. Why we want to do it is because the schools actually need to have a healthier choice sources in their canteens. Yeah, but the schools actually don't have, the, the school canteen runners, operators, they don't have the budget to use a top grade soy sauce that has healthier choice. So we are trying to make our, our standard soy sauce, the more affordable one, to have a healthier choice logo with lower salt content. Currently, there are nine sauce suppliers providing lower sodium ingredients. The Health Promotion Board says more are expected to come on board in the coming months as part of the national push to adopt healthier choices. Well, Singaporeans, we love our food and the sheer variety of what's on offer. But do you know exactly how much salt you're consuming? Bearing in mind that the recommended daily allowance is just a tiny teaspoon, John. Yeah, that's right. And here to dish out the answers as well as advice on lowering our sodium consumption, we have Dr. Kalpana Bhaskaran, 
She's Deputy Director of Industry Partnerships and Head of the Glycemic Index Research at Tamasic Polytechnic. Dr. Kalpana, uh, we're going to read a different story for a while, but just stay with us. Uh, I'm going to pull up, in fact, a few dishes uh, that we commonly find in our food courts and hawker centres. You can see that on the screen uh, just to your right, Doctor. Uh, we've got laksa, yong tau fu, fishball noodle soup and mee soto. Uh, and th these actually come from a list of more than 20 dishes that have really just on their own exceeded the recommended the daily. daily intake of 2,000 milligrams, what Joe said just mm. now, one teaspoon, right? So mm. each of these has already exceeded. But I think what we sometimes may not be sure of is which is the saltiest, or, you know, some, some, some red herrings there, perhaps. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to ask Joe, you know, just looking at this, at this <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, sequence yeah. of, of well, uh, dishes, which do you think is going to be the saltiest? Well, you know Murphy's Law, right? Murphy's <laughs> Law says what you love the best is probably the most unhealthiest. So uh, for me, it would be laksa. I mean, uh, would that fit your picture, Dr. Kalpana? Um, I don't know, maybe, what do you think? <laughs> maybe we should ask John. Yeah, yeah, what okay, do you think so is the highest? full disclosure, full disclosure, I, I, I do have the answers. And it was quite a surprise to me, actually. So let's take a look at, at which uh, uh, the salt content in each of these dishes. So there you go, laksa, as Joe said, 3,132 Up milligrams. There, but not the most. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yong tau fu, also 2,007. Uh, bear in mind, again, the, the daily recommended intake is 2,000. 2,000. Yes. Mi soto, 3,657 milligrams. So that, I believe, takes the cake. Yeah. Uh, in terms of that do the, most the, of them the eat mee soto as a breakfast item yes, in the exactly. morning. So you start off the morning already with <laughs> yes. by busting the limit yeah. for the day, right? Uh, do do people really expect you know what they are, they're seeing here, Dr. Kapana? No, this is really uh, shocking to me because in 2010 these levels were actually 22 percent lower. Mm. So all these numbers you see are actually when average 22 percent higher. In the case of maybe uh, mee goreng, which is my favorite, is not here. <laughs> actually, that is almost 98% higher than 2010 wow. data. So it is really alarmingly high amounts. And I even wonder, maybe our palate has changed over the years. We are, are we craving for more salty foods? And most of these, when you look at it, you know, it also is paired with laksa, mm. with fat. Mm. Mm. You know, and maybe fishball noodle soup and yong tau fu will not have too much of fat. But again, this is really shocking to me. Even to an expert like yourself, huh? okay, now let's look at how the health authorities have classified the main drivers of salt intake. Now, uh, soupy dishes, they come out way on the top, as you can see on our screen there, uh, followed by convenience foods. Now, what do we mean by that? Those refer to things like tom yum soup or cup noodles. Others in the list include gravy and sauce-based dishes, as well as stir-fried meals. So, Another thing to digest there, Dr. Kalpana, when we look at the perspective of the hawker who really has to make their sauces and their soups in bulk at the beginning of the day, how then do they strike that balance between keeping the flavour and reducing the salt intake? I think uh, with so much of efforts in asking them to reduce sodium and one of the strategies we always uh, um, encourage is to replace sodium or sodium chloride, which is your common salt, with salt replacements such as potassium-based salts. Mm. And these have also been, um, you know, the government has tried to give them at a subsidized rate. Mm. So it is not higher. They cannot tell, oh, it's very expensive. I'm not able to use it. So over time, this replacement will help. That is one, uh, you can cut down sodium. At the same time, we should also cut down uh, sodium in general, you know, even the potassium-based salts, you cannot use too much. Mm. So the way we, our palate has to be changed. And so it has taken 13 years, you know, slowly the salt content has mm. increased. Mm. So maybe in another couple of years, I think we need to reverse engineer mm. and try to bring back to the levels which we had in 2010. Yeah, just a quick, quick uh, uh, pick up on that point. It is quite difficult to have a customised approach to salt, right? In, yeah. in, in the food we consume in hawker centres and all that. Um, you know, you can't, it's almost like how you would approach kopi or coffee. You know, you go to the, yeah, the coffee shop and say kopi siu okay, thai. don't add sugar. Exactly. But with, with, with this, uh, what Jill said, you know, you have your uh, sauce that has been pre-packed or prepared. Uh, you have your soups that are prepared. How are you going to, it's difficult. So do you think that it, it would be more realistic perhaps to either across the board use K-salt? Or yes. maybe just Across have the a... board use K-salt. Maybe, actually there is education. We have mm. been educating but maybe that is not put into practice. Mm. So across the board, case salt, and across the board, maybe use fresh herbs and spices in mm. addition to case salt. 
So that also, and even consumers, there should be a demand. So consumers should start asking, mm. can I have less salt in my fried rice? Maybe cut on the sauce added. Yeah. So I think that will also help, you know. It's interesting you brought up uh, spices just now because that's also what uh, yeah. the health minister touched yes. on you know, at, at his event this morning. Uh, let's listen to what he had to say about that. We must remember that in Southeast Asia, we are the land of spices. We use a great variety of spices and ingredients in our food. And we use a wide range of meats, seafoods, vegetables, fruits in our local dishes. All of them add natural flavors to our food. We do not need so much salt to enhance the taste of our cuisines. So we're looking at spices that actually could be, you know, the underlooked yeah. but vital ingredient in healthier food. Dr. Kalpana, is that going to be a realistic, you know, option, uh, whether or not outside or, or even in home cooking? Definitely, it's a realistic option. And especially certain spices, the way we blend our spices used, it will cut down the sodium. You may even find, you know, when you add the uh, right amount of salt, you still find, find it salty mm. because you've added this uh, fresh herbs and spices. But uh, on that note, a word of caution is some of the spice powders mm. are also high in sodium. Mm, because they are processed. Yes, like uh, when you look at Indian cuisine, they add this masala powder oh, that yeah. is processed <laughs> yeah. and it has added salt. Yeah. And chilli powder also has added salt. Yeah. Mm. So these are the things we should be wary of when we buy uh, off uh, the shelf spice powders. Mm. Uh, Dr. Kapada, uh, you know, it's hard to say stop taking salt, you know, you know, and just go cold turkey, you know. Yeah. I mean, for, for some of us, it might be, uh, you know, a progressive thing yeah. as we go along. So if you were to advise people uh, at home uh, as to the top three tips or steps that they could take to, you know, gradually bring that level down, what would you tell them? Okay, the first thing, simplest thing to do, even if they don't know cooking, choosing in the right ingredients. Mm. Try to choose less processed foods, whole foods, and uh, whether it's going to be meat-based or vegetable-based items, instead of canned vegetables, go for fresh vegetables. Mm. And even in the case of, let's say I'm making a shrimp curry or just a stir-fried uh, shrimp rice, it's right? In that, in, that case, <laughs> in that case, what you can do is, instead of frozen shrimps, uh. Uh, let's say around 100 grams of frozen shrimps have around uh, 800 milligrams of sodium. But when I buy fresh shrimps, it contains only 250 to 300 mm. milligrams. So even in that, you can make a difference. Okay. So purchase of ingredients, read your food labels, and also, don't add sauces, no sauces on the table. Because if you add sauces on the table, that means you are insulting your chef or whoever is cooking. So you already assume, oh, the food is not tasty, I'm going to add sauce. See, I have seen many of them, you know, once they buy the food, first thing they add sauce. Yeah, or they don't taste the food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes. I, so, I think it's a habit also. Some yes. people travel with these sauces as well, right? When they go overseas. So, no, I really appreciate you uh, coming and, and serving up all these insights uh, to us. Uh, well, we've been speaking there with Dr. Kapana Baskaran, a Deputy Director of Industry Partnerships and Head of the Glycemic Index Research at Tamasic Polytechnic. Well, let's take a look at some of the other key findings in the National Population Health Survey. Some encouraging statistics include residents consuming less sugar. Now, sugar intake is reduced from 60 grams in 2018 to 56 grams or 11 teaspoons. Now, the reduction comes after nutrition labelling and advertisement prohibition measures kicked in. Health Minister Ong Yee Kang says there's now an opportunity to reset sugar consumption habits. We should make siu tai the new norm and the default. Siu tai, for those who don't understand, means less sugar. This means if we order kopi or te in future, they are automatically siu tai. You don't have to say siu tai anymore. What HPB will do is to launch an outreach and publicity campaign amongst the industry players, down to the hawkers, the coffee shops, to try to make siu tai the new norm. Now some other highlights, smoking is also on the decline, continuing the downward trend seen over the past decade. Daily smoking prevalence fell to 9.2% last year, down from 10.6% in 2019. The Health Ministry will ramp up smoking cessation services and tailor interventions to more smokers. Residents are also getting more in tune with their health. Screening rates improved for most chronic diseases like diabetes and high cholesterol. Screening participation for common cancers also rebounded to pre-COVID levels. 
However, there's a greater prevalence of poor mental health. It rose from 13.4% in 2020 to 17% in 2022. And it's more pronounced in youths, with one in four young adults aged 18 to 29 facing such issues.